Today we got somebody special for you guys out there. Oh, should we meet Miss Linda? Hey. Hi there, how are you? you? Want to tell everybody what you're famous for? <sighs> cigar box guitarist. Just? I'm the cigar box guitar lady of Kansas City. What uh, we're going to do today on Cedar Story is uh, dig into your story, what got you here, making guitars. Awesome ones by that. The one I have right here, it's a Gunslinger. Is that what you call it? Yes. Tune to Open G? Open G. How long would you, have you been doing this for? I started this in 2011. I went to the Unplus Art Fair and there was a guy there from Tennessee. And he had this booth with these hanging instruments. They were real primitive though. Uh -huh. Like just sticks with a box and some strings. And I was just mesmerized so I just put it all in my head and went home and I took my first router box and took out my router bits and I made my first one. Router box, like for Wi-Fi? No, for routers. Oh yeah. For router bits. <coughs> wow. Yeah, and I made and I made my first one and I can't stop. Yeah. I there needs to be a cigar box guitar anonymous. That's what <laughs> it needs to be. But do you want to quit? You know, I I do and I don't. I keep getting pulled back in. Yeah. And so that means that I guess I keep going until I don't go anymore. Right. I mean, you that's know? kind of life. Because it, it, the passion in making these things, you know, taking something from nothing is amazing. So for me, it keeps me out of trouble. You know, it makes me a little bit of money, and I just get to create. Did you have uh, yeah. some kind of trouble going on before you got into guitar, building guitars? Like, were you a gambler? Or... No. I'm kidding. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting a hard time. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> drink, smoke, or gamble. I'm kind of boring, actually, but... I make a heck of a guitar. You make a heck of a guitar. So, earlier I picked this one up, you are telling me this might be your favorite. I'm sure it you is. love them all. Well, you know, over the years, I've had them and then I, I let go and I sell them. Mm -hmm. This one I've not been able to sell. I did take it, take all the stuff off of it, yeah. you know, my, my personal stuff, my locking caps and all that, and I, and I was going to sell it, and then, luckily, nobody bought it, <laughs> so I took it back, put all my stuff back on, so... I'm, I'm just going to keep it. It plays well, the action is real low, and it sounds amazing. It does. Yeah, plugged in, it sounds even better. We're going to have to do that later, a little bit later and give everybody a Yeah, you, you can play it later, yeah. I'm a builder, not a real player. So. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Yeah, you can build these things. So in 2011, you decided to start making these guitars. What were you uh -huh. doing before that? Well, I worked for the city of Riverside. I was a code enforcement officer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, for five years. And then before that, I was with the Housing Authority of Kansas City. And I was I was critiquing maintenance men on their work. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I've, I've been in building background my whole life. Yeah. You know, when I was eight, I was on my dad's shoulder going up the roof to roof the chicken house. Oh, really? Yes. I had two brothers that did nothing. Where'd you grow up? In Chicago. Oh, cool. Yeah. I grew up in Chicago and then I came here and, and I just, I love tools. I probably own more tools than any five men I know. <laughs> and I know how to use them all too. So, um, yeah, I used to remodel houses. You know, I would I would move into a house and I would stay there two years, remodel it top to bottom, and then I'd move on to another house. And that's how I got next door, remodeled that, and now I'm here. So you're kind of like making money as you live in a house. Yeah, and, and I get to create things because I'm one of these that, you know, I don't have a lot of money, uh -huh. so I make what I need. Like I made that cajon over there. You made this cajon? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's a great cajon. Can we get a shot of that cajon? That thing is awesome. Yeah, I want you to take that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I made I made a cajon and then upstairs in my bedroom I made a, a drum table. A so drum I, table. Yeah, I would play that for a while. Yeah, so what else did I make? I made anything else in here. Just like the other eight guitars behind us right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like those. <laughs> you had that violin and then my there. fiddle. I made my fiddle. Yeah. Heck yeah. So well, you told me you were a drummer by trade earlier. Yes. How long have you been playing drums? <sighs> that will have to tell my age. I was 10 years old when I started. Yeah. And I, in grade school in Chicago, I fell in love with a little boy named Wally Corbett. You're and he, and he played. Well, no, he played drums. And I liked it, so, you know, I we were very poor, couldn't afford any drums or anything, but then I started playing in the school band, um, but when I was 10, I got run over by a car. Jesus. And so I got a lot of money when I turned 14. I moved here to Kansas City, went back, picked up this $10,000 check, and I went to Jenkins Music Store with my mom, and I've been dying for a set of drums, because I used to play on our kitchen table with knives, you know, I do yeah. some knives. And I went into Jenkins and I said, I'll take this and this and this. And I bought all this stuff. When you were 14. When I was 14. Wow. And, and I had money for the yeah, first yeah. time. And I told the guy, I can remember this like yesterday. I said, 
can you deliver that today? And he said, no. So we called a cab, put it all in a cab and brought it home. And I played for years. I used to play in bands all around town. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I was 20, and when I was 20, I won this contest to play around, go around the United States with this group. And I was dating this guy, and I told him, and three days later, I got an engagement ring. Really? So I gave that up for him. He says, you'll never be sorry. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying about that. But then I, I played all over, and, and uh, I just started another band. What are they called? To, well, we don't know what we're going to be calling oh, it. It's, 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 it's for women, and we're yeah. going to play cocktail music, like at, at cocktail parties and stuff. Like, yes, yeah, like, like Ain't Misbehaving and all those old, old tunes. Oh, cool. So, yeah, we just got started, so we did our second rehearsal, and we're pretty good. That's cool. We've got stand-up bass, a guitar player. I play drums or cajon, and then we have this fabulous singer. So, yeah, so it's it's going to be interesting. I've wanted to do this for a long time. You're going to have to keep us updated on that. I will. I yeah. will. I have to invite you to our first show. We don't want to play bars because nobody listens to you in a bar. No. You're preaching. Yeah, I have that experience. Yeah, but if we can do cocktail parties and dinner parties and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think we're going to be called the Four Femmes, but I'm not sure. Four Femmes? Sounds pretty yeah. good. Well, I, I wanted, um, what was the one... Um, Second time around. Second time around. Yeah, That's yeah, cool. Yeah, or third time's charm. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. But then we we decided on four fans. So those people you've known forever, or just meet them recently? No, I belong to the uh, Kansas City Women's Music Network. Oh, cool. And uh, Marva was that she started that. Oh my gosh, I don't know how many years ago, and I was the first person to join. So I've been with her forever. And we have just a group of, of females that come and meet once a month, and we play music. Whoa. We bring our guitars, or, or people bring their voices, or fiddles, stands up basses, whatever. Is there like a set genre? Or is it kind of like swap between a few? Or? No, what we do is three three chord songs. Three chord songs. So people just wanting to learn how to play can come in and feel like they've got a place to share and learn, and you like, know. Yeah. Yeah. Like and sing then, along folk stuff, kind of. Yeah, well, no, we play some rock and roll. Oh yeah. We do a little hard rock, whatever three chord song to play. As you know, three chords make any song. Yeah, so, you know. I mean, once you get to five, I think you're just yeah, like, yeah, just weird. Yeah, it's like what are you doing? <laughs> I know, I know. So, but that yeah. So I'm I'm involved with music all the way around. That is amazing. Yeah. So one thing you might have hit this already, but I'm kind of curious. So mm -hmm. you're a drummer. You've been a drummer for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you have a band, mm -hmm. and now you build awesome guitars. Is it really just that guy inspired you so much in 2011? Like even though you're a drummer, because I mean I guess the reason I'm asking is uh, I play. Play a few instruments. Uh -huh. I'd say guitar is maybe my favorite, but also do bass and banjo and ukulele. Uh -huh. But to me, like, if I start building something tomorrow, I'd probably have bass and banjo and ukulele. Uh -huh. You know, like, yeah. I probably wouldn't jump out and build a drum set. So I find it kind of interesting that being a drummer, you saw this guy with guitar box, guitar, or cigar well, box guitars, and I mean, they're really good. Like, super good. The first time I met you, I had a couple of my other friends, and all of us mm -hmm. played them, and we were just like, this feels so great, this sounds so great. And the fact you're telling me that, you're kind of a drummer by trade. Yeah, yeah, like, I know. I don't know. I mean, what what got you so much? Well, just that guy. Or? Well, when when my daughter was born, I my, when I was little, uh -huh. you know, we, like I said, we were poor. My mother used to to sing, and so we would just sit and just sing. That's all we could do. So when my daughter was born, I bought a guitar, a used guitar. Okay, so drummer by trade slash I've been playing guitar for a yes. long time. Yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> but I can't play guitar very well. So I feel like every guitar player that says that is usually better than me, though. Oh, I'm, no, I will never be anywhere near that, but, and that's not my desire, but I wanted to play <laughs> so bad. So I, growing up, you know, I, I taught her how to play a little bit, but I could never really stretch my fingers because, you know, they're so small and I don't have enough. Well, let's see. See? Uh, not much. Well, the, at least an inch. So, <laughs> so, you know, I kind of, I put the guitar aside and then I finally gave it to her because it's like I, I can't really play it. Yeah. So when I had a chance to see those and and figure out that you can play any song out there with one finger uh -huh. that amazed me. I can do that. Oh heck yeah. And that's when I built my first one and it's like I can't stop. It's so now you can play guitar all the time. Yeah, I sit here and play all I sit here and play all of these. Even my six string I'll I'll do my best, but I'll, every night I just sit in and I play them all and I talk to them because they're 
they feed me. Does, yeah. that, does that make sense? No, it totally Enjoy makes me? sense. They feed, they feed me. Music is a universal language. Absolutely. And the other thing is, you know, I have I have taken my my guitars to. Um, there's one place over there by the post office where these kids are incarcerated, and they're up old. They're old enough, I think, like from uh, 12 to 18. And I taught them how to build their own guitars. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I brought I brought stuff, and I taught them how to build them. You just do that for free? Like, yeah, you're so good. Yeah, well, you have to give it away to keep it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I went over 27th in the Paseo. There's another one over there that I that I I took my guitars in and taught them how to. Um, so we were just saying that you went to 20th and Paseo. 27th and Paseo, yeah. Trouble kids how to play guitar. Yes, yeah. And so I was there six weeks, I think it was. Uh -huh. And then I was done. And you did that with the goodness of your heart. Yeah. That is amazing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would do yeah. the same, but I'm just saying uh, most people, they do stuff like that for money. And the fact you just did it for the sake of doing it is awesome. Yeah, I, well, I got to meet some amazing kids. Yeah. You know? And that stuff helps. I mean, you said earlier, just a few minutes ago, music's a universal language. It is. It keeps people out of trouble. I mean, yes, it, does. <clears throat> it could be the idle hands theory, or focusing on something positive. I have my own theory that everybody's kind of creative, and creativity goes one of two ways. You get intelligence and imagination, that can be amazing, mm -hmm. and that can get you into trouble. You get something to focus on, like music, Yes, kind of stirs you right, you know, well, and it gives you an outlet. Well, and it and it lets you accomplish something. Yeah, you know, I mean, you you can take take one of these and pluck on it and make your own sound, and you feel it in here somewhere. You, you know, know what I love too is you always get better. Like there's always you something. Always, new. yeah. You all, just like building. You know, I started out with, with with pretty pretty okay guitars. Yeah. And then I'm, I've moved into this, you know. Yeah. But uh, it's it, it's amazing. Well, they did a study, and, it, and I was on TV a couple of years ago. They took a guy in a hospital, and they put electrodes on his head, and they put a guitar in his hand. And when he started playing his guitar, his brain lit up like the 4th of July. started making little happy faces everywhere or something? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was like the electrodes show, show what was going on in his oh, brain, yeah. and it was purples and reds and greens. And, and, and so it's... Yeah, I, I took a test and I'm about seventy-eight to eighty percent right brain. I don't know what that means. Is that, that the creative that, or that, logical? That's, that's the creative side. Oh yeah. You know, so my brain doesn't stop. I well, can be looking one. at you. <laughs> I can be looking at you and thinking I can do something else. I mean I do that twenty four seven. High five, we're in the club. Oh, God. Right. I yeah, no. I like seriously writing a verse while having a conversation that I was paying attention to. And then, but and it's yeah. fine until you catch yourself. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Like you can understand what the person's saying. You can be thinking about something else, but the moment yes. you're like, "Am I doing two things at once?" I know. Ooh. Yes, I know. That's me, and it's it's a it's a curse. It's and also it's a good. blessing. Dude. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is because it allows me to design and create different things. Oh heck yeah! So. I mean, a lot of that too is passion. I mean, usually if I'm do, thinking of something while I'm doing something, it's because I'm just so stamped for it. Yeah, and, and passion has no bounds. No. You know, I can be out in my shop for seven hours working straight and think. Did I eat today? Oh, yeah. I don't know if I ate, but I'm, I think I did. I'm going to keep on going. People call that the state of flow. And there's like therapies out there to get people through troubled times where uh -huh. their whole point is find something to get them in that state. And they describe the state of flow as like you lose track of time, you lose track of everything else. Like you just said six, seven hours. Yeah. Might actually feel like one because you're just having a great time. Yeah. You're not you're thinking like, oh, I've been here. Focused. You're just like, Absolutely. what am I doing next? I know. That's so cool. Well, back in the eighties, I had a I had a uh, flotation tank center that I you have, oh my god oh, I've yeah. done one of those those are so cool yeah I brought it to Kansas City back in, in the early eighties and uh, you you get so focused when you're in there that you come out and your your brain is just so much clearer and that's just like with building these things mm -hmm. when I'm building one I never know what it's going to look like till it's done in. till it's done so you're not like sketching this out beforehand or anything I sketch nothing out nothing nothing. Whoa. I just it's in my head. I can if you tell me you want you wanted me to build you something uh -huh. and I'm focused on you, I'm drawing it in my head. And I can see it. And so then I'll just go build it. I don't do I don't do plans. I don't no. Wow. Do that's plans. that's super impressive. I mean that's where cool. I'm standing, I could have built something like this. I feel like most people couldn't without instructions, a game plan, templates, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Well, you you, you got to start small. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like I'm teaching this one young man, and I love this kid. I can't tell you his name, but he's brilliant. He's extremely brilliant. 
and he, the guys at the Outlaw store connected me with him, so I had him come over this last summer, and uh, I taught him how to build his first guitar. Super good at it? He's super good at it. And so he came to the festival yesterday, and he bought the Parson, and now I'm going to teach him how to build his six string. Heck yeah! You know, but it'll be in July after I move back next door. <laughs> yeah. So he's, yeah, he's going to build a six string. But, you know, he's, he's one of these kids that never really said much or spoke much, and, and all of a sudden it's like we're just the best buds, and that's an amazing feeling to break the barrier. Oh yeah, you so uh, you're back here with Linda, and got a little off track, my fault, Linda's had a very amazing life, but what originally got us into contact with her is, I saw her, what was the name of that event? The El Torian, it was the Wonder, Wonder Fest. Oh, Wonder Fest. Wonder Fest. Yeah. Right in uh, Midtown KC by the Red Tower, and she had these amazing guitars there, I was there with uh, Anthony Acapeni and my wife, and we had to play all of them. And at first, you know, never met her before, didn't know who she was, was kind of like, God, I don't want to play that, don't know if I can play that. And she was like, why don't you plug this in? And probably spent the next half an hour, if not longer, playing the, playing the shit out of these things. They're awesome. <laughs> but uh, this one, which I mentioned is my favorite, was Sack Free Wild West stuff. Linda said it was hers as well. Anything you want to tell particularly about this? There's a story about this model? Mm, no, not really. It's just the backside is um, the, the Gunslinger model, which is from the Outlaw Cigar Store. And I'm, I've made several with that logo, so now I've decided to make this one with this logo on it, just to make something different. Yeah. And I, I just kind of like it. It's, it's a little masculine, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some things I noticed right away, I don't know if you'd call these borders or frames, but in the corner, very old western. I mean, the graphic design world, you have to download these things under like Wild West borders. Really cool, remind me of John Wayne and Clint Eastwood kind of scenes. Um, more Clint Eastwood with the skull guy, honestly. Uh -huh. Really nifty. She's got a four, uh, four string bridge here. Something I've never actually seen until now. Looks like something to get out on a strat except four strings, fully adjustable, intonatable. Two pretty good volume knobs. Is this a mini humbucker? Yes. Mini humbucker, and most importantly, how freaking good this thing sounds. I feel like these things are kind of made for, I have like a couple images that fly in my mind. Immediately, I hear blues right off the bat. Maybe it's a, is uh, open G the tuning you usually always use, or do you do a bunch? Uh, you can do uh, open D, open A, open E, what, just whatever. And so, uh, favorite guy here is in G, right? Yeah, that one's in G. I mean, instant blues. We're talking like how Doc Taylor used to use this. Robert Johnson used to do this tuning. And right here, four strings, even simpler than it was before, but in a way, almost freer. At least my opinion when I play it. Has right. anyone else ever told you that? Oh yeah, because they, there is no right or wrong way to play these. There instantly yeah. isn't. I mean, it's like... They're the best noodling guitar out there. Yeah, and to me it's like emotion in your brain, and it just finds it for you. Like I was saying, you want to go blues, just go... Instantly have you. Next image that always flies in my mind is like cookout by the river, tents, people having fun, like kids running around, like couples drinking, like hanging out, and you just picture her like... Same freaking guitar. Now, uh, you said it's my favorite. You said it's probably your favorite, it is but my favorite, yeah. we are surrounded by a couple models here. Want to take a look at a few others? Sure. Cool. Now, Linda was just saying this has the same pickup as the last model we saw, mm -hmm. the Outlaw Gunslinger. These cigar boxes here too. You can't tell in the video, but uh, these aren't your like cardboard things that you might have had in college, like I did. No. These are solid wood uh -huh. with with paper, just paper decoration on. Yeah, but totally solid. solid. Yes. I've seen a lot of cigar boxes in my. Uh, my wife, and I love them all, I mean they're fun, but I would say where others feel like a hobby, something I don't think we've even seen in this video, you are a straight luthier. Like, these are full-on quality guitars, they feel just as heavy as like my Fenders at home, and just as dependable, and just makes you want to pick them up and go over it. 
A um, couple things different about this one. It is six strings, once again, got that bridge like fenders, totally intonatable, fully adjustable, volume and tone knob, and let's see how it sounds with a little country going on. Did you ever get country on these? Oh, all the time. <laughs> say this thing puts a smile on my face instantly. Maybe a little more fun than my Martin. You might be right. So another model of Linda's hair. Uh, what did you call this plate right here? That's a uh, cat's bowl. This is a cat's bowl right here in a cigar box strung up with, what do you call that humbucker right there? That is a flat pup humbucker. Flat pup humbucker. I've actually never seen one of these in my life. I don't know if you can see it in the film there, but it is about a quarter of an inch uh, yeah, it, it rides right on top. There's just the wires. You put a hole through it and run it, and that way you don't have to carve out the box. So this little thing, you were telling me earlier, sounds like a banjo. Well, and if you uh, tune it to what a, a four-string banjo, it'll play a banjo so. Especially if you can remember how to play one. Here we go. Everybody there could touch one of these right now. They are so solid. The wood is so breathable. It's so resonant. The action's perfect. I have never seen a homemade guitar this freaking good. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, when I, when <laughs> Thank I, you for bringing them into the world. You're Ooh. welcome. Real quick, when I decided to finally make them and sell them, I bought a $300, $300 cigar box guitar mm -hmm. from a guy named Keith Allen. Makes the best cigar box guitars ever. Keith Allen? Keith Allen. Cool. Make and, sure he's on, and he's on the net. And I took it apart, piece by piece by piece. Just figured out what he did? Figured out what he did, put it back together, kept it for a year, and then I sold it for $300. Nice. And that's when I started building really... Kind of like a free lesson in the end. It was. Awesome. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I would love to keep talking to you all day. We talked about flotation devices and everything. We will keep talking, but before we run out of time, we got to let people know how to get in contact with you. Okay. Now, we were talking earlier, you're more person to person. Mm -hmm. So instead of a website with a lot of businesses, you said you have a Facebook. How do we find you on Facebook? Just Linda Morrison, M O R R I S O N. Uh, just send me an instant message and I'll tell me what you want to talk about and I'll be glad to get back to you. Do you have it listed as like Gladstone or Kansas City area for people? People find you. No, because I sell all over the country. Okay. I mean, I, I can I can ship anywhere. Cool. I, I used to ship to the, the guys over in Seas, the, uh, uh, what, the, the like, veterans. Okay. Yeah, we, we, I belong and we used to ship free guitars over to them. Oh, my God. Yeah. It pays so. to be a veteran to get a free guitar. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, uh, so Linda Morrison yeah. on Facebook, Lady That Makes Guitars, make sure you find the right Linda Morrison. She's located out of the Kansas City area. You were saying you post pictures of uh, the guitars you uh -huh. create, yes. and she said she's welcome for strangers to message her if you're interested in one of these guitars, interested in asking questions. If you just caught what she said a second ago, she'll mail them to you. I suggest checking them out. Linda is very friendly. She'll answer any question you have about these things. Mm -hmm. Also, besides uh, the Facebook, is there any other way that you recommend people get a hold of you, or is that like a solid... That's the, that's the best way to do it, and then just, you know, I'll be glad to get back with you and we exchange numbers and we'll talk. Cool. Um, you said something about a phone number earlier. Did you yeah. want to message you on Facebook first, or did you want to throw your number out there? Uh, I'll throw it out. It's 816-519-1900. Get that number. We're going to put it at the bottom of the screen. But if you're interested in one of these things, Linda is one of the friendliest people I've met. Just give her a call, even if you're not sure. Ask some questions, and, uh, well, if you're going down this road anyway, you can't make a mistake here. Mm. But now that we have a, pretty much we got a few minutes until this footage runs out, what do you want to add? Anything you want to share with these people? I mean, I could keep playing these things forever. I, I, I know, I know. Um, 
I guess the only the only thing I can say is if you ever want to play a guitar and you don't think you can, mm -hmm. one finger you can play any any song out there with one finger. How's that Bo Diddley beat go? You know what I'm talking about? Something like that. Yeah. Johnny Depp has one, none of mine. Steven Tyler has one. Paul McCartney has one. ZZ Top has one. Uh, but I say Keith Urban has one. And Bo Diddley has one. <laughs> oh, Bo Diddley it, probably has like 20. You can play with one finger. Well, well his, his was, was two boxes put together. Oh. Two cigar boxes put together to make a longer one. No way. Yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I'm going to keep doing this as long as it's in my hand. Um, do you want to show them the violin you showed us earlier? Sure. So this is her first one of these, and to me it looks like a real freaking violin. It's amazing. I mean, check this thing out. I try to play it. I can't play a violin, but that's well, besides I can't either, but... Um, you did that chuggy thing. That was pretty good. Yeah. But it, it plays. It's, it's got what they call precision tuners on there. And they're they're locking tuners because mm -hmm. I tried pegs and the pegs keep slipping. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put a piezo in it and, and amp it. 